So basically what I've got are the three primaries, um, Oriole and Yellow, Rose Matter, and ultramarine blue, a yellow, a red, and a blue. And then so that I can get the textural effects happening on the kangaroo paw, I'm also using some lunar earth, which is just a brown. I'm starting off with a piece of cheap watercolor paper. So this is just a generic brand, very, very cheap. And I like to get my creative juices flowing with some cheap paper. I'm going to be painting without drawing, which is my favorite way to paint. And I'm going to be doing lots of wet in wet. So with my first brush, I'm going to prepare a little puddle of yellow. Here's a swatch of it. This is Oriole in yellow. It's absolutely fabulous for the subject matter. But I'm just preparing a little puddle. Um, I've got some Viridian green. Another brush, I'm preparing a little puddle of green. That's how my green looks. And it's a reasonably pale version of green. Next brush, I am going to uh, reactivate my Lunar Earth. And I can see that I need a little more Lunar Earth. Squeeze that out there. What I like to do is put the um, paint in the corner of the little well. And that way I've got access to more paint whenever I want it, but I leave a lot of the lump of paint intact. Okay, there's my Lunar Earth. Here's my red. Just wet my brush, reactivate that little puddle there. The um, kangaroo paw has got little tiny red tips all over it. And then I've got two other brushes there. This is a flat brush, um, which is marvelous for taking off color. And this is a really large um, mop brush that's wonderful for um, when you're painting big, sur big surfaces. But um, um, I don't really need a brush that big today it will actually complicate things um, it will introduce too much water into my wet and wet so I'm going to set that one aside here so I'm just going to wet that brush and I'm going to be copying these beautiful shapes that go here here and here and then I'm just going to add color to those beautiful bits put my water brush over there and I'm just looking for where the shine is and it's got this yummy shape that comes out a little bit there, 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 comes down. I'm just going to finish painting the top half before I move further down. I'm creating one bulk shape. This comes down here, there. And once I'm happy with that, I'll come in with some of these other little colors I've got ready here. I've got, I'm just going to delicately touch in little tiny bits of green here and little tiny bits of brown on this side of the um, kangaroo paw and maybe put in a little bit of dark color there, a little bit of dark there, there. I'm just adding little bits of dark and I might just risk and see if I can, there's a stupid fly in here with me today, little tiny touches of red there, there, oh can I see a touch of red there possibly and I think there's a touch there, oh and there's possibly a touch there and all right I'm going to continue to move down the page now. Uh, go back to my water brush and I'm going to continue down to the lower half of this particular um, bud shape here and it's got a fat bottom on it. There's a shape here and I'm going to continue down the front half here doing the stem and include this big one here and bring it around like that and it's got a fat bottom and it joins okay and then go back in with my beautiful yellow aureole and yellow and knock that in that shape here 
there's a shape in here that I'm going to put in later. At the moment, I'm treating it as one big shape and not worrying about the individuals. Um, continuing down and then stop and see if I can get away with adding a little tiny bits of green there, straight in with the brown on top of it. The brown is Lunar Earth. It's got a lovely dash of brown there. And um, it's got the tinsiest bit of red on its tip. And there is an extra bud over there, but I'm going to deal with that later. And do I need to add any more here? Nope. Continue down. Water. The whole thing is very yellow. It's getting quite green as it gets to this point. And I'm going to just include these bits here. And then with lots of water, I'm going to run my brush over there, up there, out there. Oh, and that's got cute bits over there like that. Come back with my yellow. Here it is. It comes down here. Here's the yellow shape. It's got this beautiful curve in it and a fat bottom. And there it goes up there. There's a bit behind it there, a bit there, a bit there. And there, go like that. Um, and then there's a little bit of a leafy kind of shape and some leafy kind of shapes that come up there. Repeat with the green in there is a bit of green, well, quite a bit of green there, tiniest bit of green here. Oh, I'm inventing some green there because I like it and these leaves definitely have a beautiful green tinge to them. Come in with the brown to add dark shadowy colour here and there, there, it's light up there. There's a shape behind it but I'm dealing with that later. I'm adding some of my earthy lunar earth into that viridian because the viridian is um, not really a natural looking colour. Into the stem, I'm adding tiny bits of green along here added this stem there. Do I need to improve anything? A little bit of green there. And where I've added green, I'm also going to make the green earthier by touching it with the earth colour. Now next up, I want to go in with my tiny brush. This one is called a liner. It's like a tiny version. I'm cleaning it off. It's like a tiny version of a rigger and because it's such a small um, area of brush um, feathers <laughs> uh, that's called the ferrule and this is this where the bristles are um, but a watercolor brushes it's hard to call it a bristle because it's so beautifully soft anyway it's got this magic point to it and that's what I'm about to make use of to drag out some of the paint and get these little furry bits happening. So there's no paint on my brush. I'm just dragging it out from the side of the painting. And it goes all the way around. So I'm just dragging out here first. Bit of a focal point, this one. So quite nice to focus on this one first. And um, there's lovely texture in there. I'm going to see if I can grab some of the Lunar Earth, dipping into the thicker stuff there, and just see if I can increase the uh, texture by uh, adding Dotty Dotty or all along there. Dotty Dotty. And then to drag it out the other side, I'm switching to my yellow brush because for a couple of reasons, it's starting to try and um, I want to be fast and the yellow brush is sitting there waiting for me to use it. So I'm just quickly, as fast as I can, because the whole thing is drying, just just all of that. I need to um, knock back that brown there 
That's why it's worth doing a practice sometimes. Come in with the um, yellow and I'm going to go into that brown and knock it back with a beautiful pure, it's practically pure paint that's on my brush at the moment. And I'm going to continue that up there. This is yellow in yellow. It's, it's probably quite subtle, hard to see on the video. But I'm um, just going to continue that. It's kind of, when you stare at the photo, there's kind of like rows of beautiful shape on it. There, okay. There's bristles all the way down. These little furry bits continue absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to really quickly see if I can capture some of this beautiful furriness, particularly out the edge. I can come back and do the middles later, but if I can capture, if I can drag out these lovely sides to the kangaroo paw while it's still wet. I'm breaking that hard line on the side of it. I'm creating texture at the same time. And um, if I'm lucky, it will be quite seamless from one to the next. It's quite dry up here, so I'm probably just painting wet on dry. Uh, right, so the other thing that I'm learning now from doing my little practice painting is that on the beautiful paper, I need to do all the little dragging out feathery bits before I um, continue down to the next part. So it's just the right amount of wet on the stem part here. Just doing that. And as I'm getting faster, my little furry bits are getting longer and it, that's not really how it looks. In fact, on the leafy bit, uh, the little furry bits are super small. And also I don't want to be too homogenous. I still want this piece here, this um, bud, if I can call it that, to be um, the focal point. So it's got the most detail at the moment. So there I've got a lovely quick um, layer number one. And when that's dry, I can come in and add this background bud here. There's a background bud there. There's an extra leaf here and there's a foregrounded bud just here, but I need that to dry. Um, while I'm just waiting for it to dry, however, this is a great opportunity to lift off. So I'm gonna use my sponge. It uh, is stained, but it's clean. It's important that it's clean because um, as I put the paint on it, I don't want to be picking up any random colors. So this beautiful um, fat bud looking thing here has some quite prominent stripy bits. There's that stupid fly. And I'm just going to see if I can lift off um, some color and not really. So the yellow isn't particularly lifting. I'll see if I can lift off this lovely highlight here. Oh, okay. Bigger section I seem to be able to do. And I'm just gonna wash that paint off, turn it back into a thirsty brush, and I'm just lifting off highlights over there. And there's a little highlight there. Wash it off, get rid of the paint, put it on the sponge, turn it back into a thirsty brush. I wonder if that will work now. That's a bit better. Perhaps it just needed to be that right level of damp to turn into a thirsty brush. And there's a lovely highlight here. Now the disadvantage in your cheap paper is that it will only allow a certain amount of lifting off before it just gets really, really uh, fuzzy, peeled the paper starts to collapse. Okay, getting rid of that. My water. Now I'm going to keep this close by so that I can um, remember 
what my mistakes were and swap it over for this lovely one. So over here, I know it's just off camera is the one, my little practice painting. Here is the, um, my photograph that I took um, last year when all the kangaroo paw was out. It's not out at the moment because it's autumn. And um, I'm going to start again. But this time I've worked out some of the bugs and I um, have done a little practice and I know where I'm going. Now I'm working on the beautiful ash paper. So this particular ash paper is um, rough. It's 300 GSM. Uh, 23 by 31 so that's just larger than a4 it's a pad if you want to buy this one you want to look for the word pad um, it's essential otherwise you get a uh, block it tends to mean that it's been gummed all the way around the outside this ash paper is 100% cotton so it's um, archivally sound all right, I'm ready now to do it again. This is my water brush. I'm going to double check. Yes, that's the water brush. Okay, so I'm going to start up the top again. Here's the watery lumpy bit over there and it comes down and, oh, here's a thought. I should paint it in straight into yellow. Oh, I don't know why I didn't think of that. A really pale yellow and then You'll be able to see what I'm doing straight away, won't you? Okay, there, and so I'm going to dip into the water a lot so my yellow is lovely and pale. And then I've got this shape just behind it, it's just a little lower, and there's a small space. That one, the next one over is joined, so I'm going to join them. Then there's a slightly pointy one, a pointy one, and it comes down and there's a space there. So I, I know now to finish this off completely while I'm here. And I'm gonna alter the order that I did it in. I'm going to start with my furry little strokes. I've dipped my brush into the pure pigment and I'm dragging out. I'm touching the flower head, bud, whatever it's called, and flicking outward. It's got this delightful tip to it. And all the way around, I'm going to do little flicky bits to hopefully look like fur. It goes all the way down there. And I'm going to do it in this tiny negative space. And keep coming down. Go back into my yellow. I've got the watery yellow now. This barely has any furriness, so I'm just going to give it a tiny bit. This one is right in the light, so it's really got the um, furriness happening. Really trying to be very controlled. So when your hand is near the ferrule, it's not on the ferrule, but it's near the ferrule, you have a huge amount of control. I pretty much never paint like that, that's a pen, because you do want to try and use your hand. At the moment I'm just using my wrist, not my whole arm, because I'm doing quite a controlled section. This one here has barely any fur, but it does have fur on this side, so, oh, that stupid fly's coming. There, I'm just continuing with my furriness furriness or oh, big furriness down here. I'm going to reload with the watery yellow. Big furriness and then I've got this brown. Oh it's got yellow. I mean, I thought that was the brown. That's the brown. Go into the watery brown and if you match viscosity you get beautiful wet and wet action. So by that I mean that the paint I'm applying is as wet as the paper that's receiving the paint. Just as wet. Ah, there's a beautiful dark bit in here. Dark, dark, dark. 
putting that on and I'm going to switch and add such a small amount of little green bits in there possibly some green I can see there almost no green there so I'll just give it one dot and I'm going to go back in to uh, all of these ones fly is bothering me I'm going back into the thicker paint and dispersing the green and the brown I don't want them to dominate I just want them to suggest that there's a lovely color there on this side plus also that I get a little bit of tone over here oh, there's lots of tone around there I'm going to do the same into this one yellow into the brown yeah. and as I dab it I'm also picking up some of the brown so I'm transferring it as as well uh, there's a predominance of green there so I'm just going to pick up the brown and knock it back don't want the green to dominate but the viridian is a fascinating color in the way it's um, spreading there okay this shape here requires a little bit of a uh, slightly darker tone just in there so that one can have some that one can have some and in here there's some lovely darks there'll be an extra shape I put in there later and there's a beautiful dark in there a bit of a shadowy color in there but I'm going to put it as just a brown for now and I now I can continue down Grab my water brush firstly. Oop, which one is the water? I think it was meant to be this one. Just clean it. Oh, that's why I switched to the yellow, didn't I? Okay, so this comes down here. So I'm pulling down that color, down that stem, and there's a lovely. Mm, I switched to the yellow so you can see it better right put in the water first it comes down and it's got a fat bottom shape there and I'm going to come in with my yellow and use the tip of my brush to really create that pointy yummy bit kind of points like that just spending lots of time observing the picture it would be so ideal if I really had a kangaroo paw in front of me but there's none in the garden at the moment in bloom in fact um, I think they've all died back a bit of yellow there and then I'm going to add my um, darks underneath, dark, 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 all down here. And this one definitely has more of the green going on. Just dotting it so it doesn't dominate the yellow. And coming with the, there's green there, green there. It's almost a stripe green. There, there. And we're early. Oh my god! Oh my god! How do we wait? Oh no! It's five seventeen. I'm recording myself. I'm, recording <laughs> I'm just going to finish painting this. Oh, okay. Because um, it's all wet, and I'm planning what to teach next. You see, and I've been working on maybe making videos first and play the video. To, um, self-critique uh, no to make it easier for people to see oh, okay. and also to kind of remind myself of what I was doing because it's actually easier if I don't talk as I paint much easier I'm going I wonder to... if it would be um, helpful to um... that's a much better painting <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it would be better to um distribute the video ahead of the class.
Yeah, I, so I totally have, could. Yeah, have people watch it first. Yeah, and then you can talk. Yeah, um. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing here? Hello. Hello. Oh, 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 you gonna do the contemporary? Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. That's sad, but but you know. Oh, yeah, he was old. Eighty-eight. He was old. He was old. Indeed. Yeah. Right. Cool. You're on drugs.